Hey dad, what's this button do? Oh no! Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to What's This Button Do? I'm your host Dustin and today we're going to be tackling a subject that I got asked about last week. The question I was asked was, what is your favorite pedal? And I didn't even have to hesitate to think about this. Most people that I talk to, they'll have a favorite drive pedal or a fuzz pedal. Uh, for me, it's a little different. My favorite pedal in the world is the Boss EQ 200. And I know this sounds crazy. I don't think I've ever met another person who has answered with this question. Um, my buddy Blake uh, runs a podcast called The Tone Mob. And he always asks, what's your favorite boss pedal at the end of that? And I've always known if I ever go on that show, this is going to be my answer. And I'm going to have so much fun explaining it to him. But um, truth be told, this wasn't always my favorite pedal. Um, I, two years ago, would have answered you with a, one of my favorite drives or one of my favorite fuzzes because I rely on those so much for my tone. Um, but a little incident happened a few years ago, which I kind of uh, gave you a little sneak peek of in the opening of this episode where I was downstairs playing guitar, I had my tone dialed in, what I thought was my correct tone, and my daughter came running in and she said, what's this button doing? She reached down and I actually had the Boss EQ 200 plugged in, but I was just doing it for a little bit of getting rid of a little bit of the bass end. And she dropped the 800 level completely out of my sound. Um, and I freaked out, I was like, no, no, gosh, ah. And then I, I had a drum track and a bass pack play, playing and I listened to it for a little bit and I thought, wait, what just happened? So I went over there, tweaked it a little bit, and I realized, oh my gosh, this made my playing come through so much clearer, so much brighter, and it absolutely changed my sound. So I wanted to share a little bit with you. So I actually went back, I set up my rig the way I used to have it playing, um, that was a little darker and muddier than what I'm currently playing now. And all I'm gonna do in this video is just turn on the EQ200, turn off the EQ200, just so you can hear the massive amount of difference that it makes. And this is not even with any extreme settings. All I've got is basically the treble section bumped up a little bit high, the mids taken out just a little bit, and just a little bit of a curve on the, on the bass end. And you will hear a massive difference in how this affects the tone. So let's take a look at that now. So you can hear how much difference there is to the sound when I just engage the Boss EQ200. It is amazing how much that will change your tone. But why is it doing that? The real reason is what this is is a graphic EQ. And for those who have never heard of graphic EQ before, um, what you'll have is bands across here. And in studios, you might see it all the way up to 32 bands. But I like to think of it like a surgeon's knife versus a butter knife. So. If you were just to have an EQ that had highs, mids, and lows, just those three things, basically what you're doing when you're turning down the lows is you're dropping a whole bunch of these frequencies out of the mix. But it's like a massive amount that you're affecting. So as you turn it down, when you only have a highs, mids, and lows, like you would see on a lot of amplifiers, you're affecting a lot of frequencies in that signal. Something like the Boss EQ that has 10 different bands on it allows you, the more bands you have, it's kind of like a fining 
the blade on the knife. You're getting into a surgeon level, really thin blade. So each one of these is just slicing that little bit out of the mix, or it's boosting that little bit up in the mix. It's just affecting that little amount, a little sliver there. So you're not chopping up and just meat cleavering the entire signal. You're able to get there and refine it. A lot of studios use 32 band EQs and I love those because you can find one little frequency that's bugging you and take it out, or you can boost that little bit that you want to stand out in the mix. It really allows you to do a lot of that. So what we're gonna do today, and I think uh, we'll give you a little bit better explanation, is I'm gonna show you um, each one of these bands and how it works. I'm gonna drop the entire signal on it, and then I'm just gonna bring up one band at a time so you can hear how that affects clean tone, and then I'll also do it with a fuzz pedal so you can hear it uh, affecting the drive, so that you can see what each one of these frequency channels does to your signal and how that affects your overall mix. Now, I know for some of you, when you boost the, the highs on there, the sound by itself is gonna be a little gr bit grating. And for those of you who are bedroom players, um, who don't do a lot of mixing, who don't play with a lot of other members in your band, you just like to play by yourself, you'll find sometimes that doing that can be a little harsh to the ears. But the reason I point this out is anytime you're in a band environment or if you're recording and creating your own music at home, maybe you're just doing it by yourself, um, this is a great way to make instruments stand out in the mix. And if you've ever heard a recording and you've ever heard stems, which are the individual instrument recordings like in Pro Tools, um, if you ever just go and solo a stem, it's really interesting. If, for those who haven't done it, just do a YouTube video on that and take a look at them. Stems by themselves, even on some of your favorite songs, some of the best bands you've ever heard, if you just listen to one stem of one guitar track, they often sound terrible on their own. But when you put them all together, it creates this amazing thing. It's kind of like a recipe where you, you may add something really bitter to the recipe, but by adding it with all these other sweet and amazing salty things, that bitterness just gives it the perfect balance. And that's what the EQ pedal allows you to do. So why don't we dive into this? We'll take a look at that through clean tones and we'll take a look at it through uh, fuzz sounds and just let you see what it sounds like.
Now, hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how each frequency within a graphic EQ helps you to change your sound and to tweak it a little bit. Um, there are lots of different types of EQ out there. In future episodes, we're going to be covering a few of my favorites. Uh, my plans coming up is to cover Poltec style EQs next, which is a completely different animal. Uh, my thoughts are we're going to do either the Para EQ from Empress or we're going to do the Equinox from Spaceman. So I'd like to know which one you'd like to see. There's a few videos out there for both of these on YouTube, but I thought I'd go a little bit more in depth than what's traditional. So comment down below which one of those two you'd like me to cover next, and then we'll make that our next uh, episode that we do on EQ. I'd also like to hear from you about other EQs that you'd like to try. If you'd like to us to cover a specific one that you've found helpful, um, or you just want to share out there with your favorite EQ, we'd love to hear it. We're going to be kind of keeping a little running tally of people's favorite pedals, and I'll be sharing with those uh, with you on future episodes. So please comment down below. Let us know what you think. Um, as always, we really want to thank you for coming out today. Follow me on uh, Instagram at what's this button do Dustin. You can see the little link down below. And I'd also like to thank my partners at Palin Music. They have made this such a wonderful experience and have been helping to put these episodes out. Uh, so I'd like to thank them as well and encourage you all if you haven't gone to their website or if you're lucky enough to live in one of the areas they have a store, visit their store and take a look. I know they happen to carry that Boss EQ200, so uh, make sure you check it out when you're in there next time. Thank you so much. Next week, we're going to be talking about silent recording and how to set up your own little home studio, whether you're in an apartment, in one bedroom, wherever you're at, we're going to help you find a way to make your own music in your space. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.